I have safety pins, I don't have a clamp. We can't safety pin latex. Oh God, that's... You got shoes. Yeah, those are the cruel shoes. Only a few people have seen my vagina. <laughs> I cannot imagine how many people have seen your vagina and are currently using your vagina. Somewhere. I'm being fucked right now. Does that feel good? <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I'm suddenly extremely aware of how many clothes I'm wearing. I don't think the answer is to get rid of porn. The answer is to bring porn further into the sunlight. So do you still enjoy what you do? I, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, especially you this You look kind of like stuff. you're having a good time. Good. Yeah, there you go. I love it. Since I started directing myself, I am having sex with who I want to have sex with. Around here. Yeah, it's this way. Okay. Jessica Stoyadinovich, or Stoya as she's known, is the queen of alt porn. Instead of bunkering down like the rest of us, she spent her lockdown stripping off. How does the um, that porn industry compare, like here in New York versus out in California? So you kind of can't shoot porn in New York. You can shoot very sexually explicit art but that's like, it gets very vague. So where does it cross the line? I guess, what's the definition that's, of porn? There is no legal definition of porn. Mm -hmm. To me, what we did today was pin up, right? We didn't even put anything in me. She's been called the goth girl next door, the pop star of porn. She calls herself a giant fucking nerd. Stoya, can you introduce yourself real quick? Hi, I'm Stoya. I make dirty, dirty movies for Digital Playground. You'll see this after here. Oh my goodness. Very nice. Stoya has become one of the most recognized faces in the industry. She's made hundreds of videos over her decade-long stint. She's also one of the fiercest defenders and harshest critics of everything porn. So I want to go back to get a little bit of your background and kind of who you are. I mean, if I, I guess, how would you describe yourself? Um, I'm a pornographer in most contexts. If I'm on an airplane and there's a kid right there and this person is like, what do you do? I'll be like, oh, I work with sexually explicit material. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you just like drop <laughs> drop the voice a little bit and it's not a word that like a kid's gonna go like, mommy, what's porno? Whether we like it or not, porn is here to stay. Globally, it brings in an estimated $97 billion a year. That's three times the revenue of Hollywood. And Stoya ranks among the top stars of the last decade. With our culture today and with the emphasis on social media, do you ever worry that you are, you know, contributing to that feeling that I think a lot of young girls have that if you're not sexy, then you don't have value? Yeah, I am a sex symbol and that absolutely might send a certain message. But I would get messages regularly, like, hey, Stoya, seeing you sexualized helped me feel like my body could also be sexy. Now, like, I wanna remind you, I'm a human. I bet that's part of why I showed up today looking like I look. Like, I don't, I don't have any makeup on, unless it is glamor time. I show up as I am in the world. Because I, I guess like part of the appeal is that, you know, you are down to earth, you're, you're not, I mean, and I'm sorry, I don't mean this in an offensive way at all. I mean, it, like you're natural, you're not like overly glammed up in any way. Yeah, I mean, I, full disclosure, I had corrective lenses for a lazy eye, extensive orthodontic work, and I had scoliosis, so I wore this back brace. Ooh. So like, natural for me is always a little strange. I'm like, but so much engineering went into me. <laughs> Stoya is an only child. Growing up, her mum worked in sciences and her dad was in IT. Her younger years were pretty sheltered. 
So take us back to your upbringing, your childhood. You, you grew up in North Carolina. I was mostly homeschooled. Mm -hmm. How was that? Um, wacky. When I would enter like social contacts with peers, I was so freaking awkward. Because you were homeschooled and you weren't around people, you think? My concept of the world was such that when I got into it as an adult, I didn't really understand the stigma against sex work. Mm. Porn sounded like fun. And I went home and I thought about it and it was like, well, do I want to be a teacher? Do I want to be a politician? The answer to both of those is no. Do I care what people are gonna think down the line? And I really didn't think I cared that much. And in 2007, I started to do hardcore porn on video. Sawyer started out doing sex scenes with women before moving on to men. She soon signed with one of the biggest porn studios in the country, Digital Playground. When Digital Playground was saying, we're gonna make you a star, I didn't look at myself and go like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna be huge. I'm still gonna be doing this 10 years later. I mean, your mom was a hardcore feminist. How does she- She's pretty feminist. <laughs> yeah. How does she take the news? Real bad. Um, she went very quiet for like an uncomfortable amount of time. And that feeling as a child, like no matter, no matter how old you get, that feeling of like, my parent is so disappointed, they do not have words. I cannot imagine having that conversation with my parents who are definitely more uptight than your parents. <laughs> But her mum's disapproval didn't stop her. Stoya's videos were an unexpected hit. Stoya! In 2009, she was crowned Best New Starlet at the AVN Awards, the Oscars of porn. Thank you so much, each and every person that jerks off to my smut. <laughs> and then a sex toy company signed her up to commission a mold of her vagina, which was sold around the world. The Stoya the Destroyer Fleshlight. Looks just like my pussy. See? Only a few people have seen my vagina. <laughs> I cannot imagine how many people have seen your vagina and are currently using your vagina <laughs> to have sex with. Yeah. Tell us about what that feels like. Somewhere I'm being fucked right now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> does that feel good? It really does. <laughs> I feel like such a prude right now. <laughs> For decades, porn has been both scrutinized and celebrated. Our new film is really geared towards the women's liberation of today. I think a lot of women are really gonna get off on it. They're really gonna like it. It wasn't until the 70s, at the height of the sexual revolution, that sex on screen began to go mainstream. Some considered porn a liberating act. Others claimed it was an assault on feminism. With technology making porn more accessible than ever, the controversy goes on. Um, it seems like there's two kind of very loud voices on either end of the spectrum. One, which is, you know, people who are outraged at what they see as very demeaning work for women. And then on the other side, there are these people who feel like it is very empowering for women to be able to get money to sell their own sexuality in the ways that they might want to do so. Yeah. Where do you fall on, on that? I feel like people with really extreme viewpoints or people who feel very emotional get very loud. No one should have to have sex for money. No one should have to do anything to provide a roof and basic medical care for themselves. You know, employing women is feminist. The fact that the women are getting paid maybe is empowering. Is it feminist to get paid to take your clothes off? You don't really relate to either of those extremes. Yeah. It's just, this is the way society works. This is a capitalist society. And therefore, this is also where porn fits in. Yeah. For years at Digital Playground, Sawyer was the darling of mainstream porn. Were you enjoying the work? 
Um... Sometimes very much so, sometimes not at all. Depending on who it's with or... Depending on who it's with, a lot of the times depending on the plot. One of the first scenes I did for them, they had me squirting whipped cream into my mouth and then letting it drop on the floor. And like the scene was like, my boyfriend sees the whipped cream and then punishes me. She had to do take after take. And so it's like getting in the back of my oh. throat <laughs> and I'm feeling like gummy and milky and like not sexy at all. And I burst into tears because oh. it was like, I don't know how I'm going to go from this to sexy. I didn't know how to assert myself effectively in a commercial environment mm. that was, you know, turning out a set standard of product every month and you come in as a contract girl and you get slotted into the production schedule. Why is that that so many of these scenes seem to be kind of cliches of each other, like so-and-so cheats on each other, my stepsister is sleeping with my dad? And a lot of people find, you know, frankly, manipulation to be erotic. I'm definitely like super curious about what works for people about it in like what an intellectual. What is it that works about incest? Yeah, I'm like, like I'm literally, like... if you go on Pornhub, there's just this endless stepsister, the top, stepbrother, stepdad. The top tags, the top tags. What it's if you like... don't want to have sex with your family? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you supposed to find free porn if you don't want to fuck your family members? God, I don't, I don't get it. If anyone can explain it to me. Hey, I'm I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stoyer was on an exclusive contract with Digital Playground. That didn't always mean that she knew when the money would come through, though. Digital Playground paid me based on what got shot. So if they didn't book me that month, I didn't get paid. Oh, wow. Um, so it was a little fucked. Um, most young people are gonna have a really hard time and get taken advantage of to some degree in these industries. And it's it's not just porn, but it does occur in porn. And how does Stoya work into all this? Come on, come on over here, princess. You look young. You know what they say? Best it's the <laughs> yeah. Old enough to go to the store, old enough to get bread. <laughs> For young women who grow up in porn, exploitation is rife. Stoya herself has spoken up about abuse in the industry before. Her bravery encouraged other women to come forward about sexual abuse both on and off set. You've spoken about abuse that you've suffered previously. We don't need to talk about that and re-traumatize you, but I did want to talk in general about abuse within the porn industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, how common is it? So abuse is very complicated. Um, Can you give me an example? Yeah, so we have, um, you know, we have like a lot of pressure from anti-sex or anti-porn feminists who say that all of it's abuse, and I don't think they're correct. These situations, like, they really do occur, but I don't think the answer is to get rid of porn. I think the answer is to bring porn further into the sunlight. But it can't be, what do you expect, it's porn. And it can't be, you're unabusable. It has to be, sex work is work. These people are equal humans. Why is it that it is hard to speak up against the industry itself as a whole? I mean, who is it that controls the industry? Who are the people behind it? It used to be, you had Hustler, and you had Playboy, and you had Caballero and Vivid, and now there is MindGeek. MindGeek owns more than 100 websites and companies like Pornhub, Brazzers, and RedTube, as well as Stoya's former employer, Digital Playground, which she left in 2014. They've monopolized the industry, which is a big problem. Those in the business either stay silent about abuse or risk losing everything. So there are direct kind of implications for the monopolization of porn. Workers' rights, um, because when a company owns... Everything. Yeah, like a, a big portion of the available gigs, then you have, to, you have to play by their rules. Just weeks ago, Pornhub came under fire in a New York Times investigation, which alleged the website is infested with illegal content like child sexual assault. 
Pornhub claims they have always policed this material, but in response to the report, they removed all unverified videos, about 80% of their content. But Stoyer has had enough of playing by the industry's rules. She's now creating content for her own sex site, Zero Spaces, where she writes and directs some of her own scenes. She wants us all to think more, not less, about sex. Mm -hmm. Are you into feet at all? Um, sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. Can I like, touch your feet? I mean, is it weird? That's not weird at all. It's not weird at all. No. Just... Do you think that we should all be more experimental and is that part of what Zero Spaces is encouraging? Mm -hmm. I wanted a space where we could talk in detail and intellectually and also be explicit viscerally about sex. Hi, I'm Stoya. I'm in Amsterdam. So now we're gonna very quietly go to a hotel and have sex on camera, which sounds like shooting a porn, which is not anything I would ever, ever do. It's almost like I want to turn people's brains on and have them engage with sexuality. And then we bake for 35 minutes or so. Come into Zero Spaces, see something new, get a little weird, try something, follow an impulse. It's not weird. It's not weird it's at all. Uh -huh. No, it's a neglected part of the body, I feel. Mm. Mm. Basically, doing the yoga here that this mistake right. was intended for. Oh, there you go. Put it. See there. This year has been tough on the porn world. It's difficult to create sex scenes from a distance. But more and more, people are turning to virtual sex work. OnlyFans is a subscription-based social media site where fans can interact directly with the people they follow. Over 450,000 creators have signed up since mid-March. Stoya was one of them. Can you get a close-up of my butthole from the close-up of your butthole guy? Yes. That's an OnlyFans guy? Yeah. People have, people have things, I swear to Christ. That's the weirdest thing. And he really, really wants your butthole? He really wants a close-up of my butthole, and it is very difficult to get a close-up Maybe the lights in our places. What is he gonna do with that? I don't know, make a pillow. <laughs> He's gonna yeah. make himself happy. <laughs> What's the benefit to going to OnlyFans, which is kind of a direct-to-consumer model? It really puts the power into the hands of the performers to say, I'm happy to do this, I don't wanna do that. Um, and that's really wonderful and so important for workers' rights. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is the future of sex work? Um, or of pornography? I sure hope it is. Stoya is in the top 1.2% of earners on the site. Fans pay $10 a month to access her page. For a higher price, they can also send personalized requests, ranging from bedtime chats to slightly weirder stuff. I love the small penis humiliation guys. What do you mean by small penis humiliation guys? They want to be told they have a small penis. Oh. And the more you make fun of their tiny weenie, the harder it gets. And it just makes them so happy. I'll log into OnlyFans and I'll be like, hey, little dick, can I let you have it? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic, tiny penis. How dare you irritate me with its minuscule, laughable size. Um, yeah. Oh, wow, and that turns men on? Yeah. Wow. Yes, there's some of those. I don't think I'll be trying that with my boyfriend. <laughs> Stoya does seem to genuinely enjoy so much of her work, but there are also serious downsides, not least for her personal life. Let me tell you what it's like dating as Stoya at my age. Let me tell you, I have seen so many limp dicks. It intimidates men <laughs> so much. <laughs> and like, they don't know what to do and they put you on a pedestal and then sometimes they put you in the garbage can and then you break it off with them. Is it possible to have a monogamous relationship whilst 
doing porn? Well, no, there's that too. Um, the way I approach my work, like, especially since I started directing myself, I am having sex with who I want to have sex with. So like, it's also really absurd that I would end up in these monogamous things when it's like, except for when I pay people I want to have sex with to have sex with me and there's a camera there. <laughs> um, and it just, it's just not for me. Did you ever think about just leaving the industry altogether? I'm, I'm considered retired. Because of your age or because? Because they haven't come across me on Pornhub mm -hmm. in a minute. And I limit my involvement with mainstream anything. You feel like you have more control now? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you encourage young girls to get into sex work? No. no, what, no, no. what do you say to them? <laughs> what do you say to the girls <laughs> yeah. themselves? It, do you want to do anything with your life other than have sex on camera? Because that only lasts for so long. Um, and you, you know, you know, it's kind of a gnarly place, right? Like entertainment's a gnarly place, and plus you're expected to at least give a convincing performance of enjoying the dick you're taking. But if you could go back to your 20-year-old self, would you pursue a different career? It took me a really long time to get comfortable with doing interviews, with dealing with the press, and with people recognizing me. It does make you feel kind of like an other, even though it's appreciative and like even like glorifying. I don't know. Because this is really good. It was hard to get here, but this is really good. Shoe. You're gonna wear the shoes, you might as well. Show the shoes. comfortable positions ever. Do you worry at all that, I mean, because it's so accessible and more and more people are getting into it, that more and more younger people are getting involved in OnlyFans? I worry about anyone making choices at 18, but I have to contextualize that within the fact that, like, we allow 18-year-olds to sign up for the military at risk of literally dying for their country. You know, life is risk. And if you're thinking about dabbling in sex work and make no mistake, taking your clothes off on OnlyFans is sex work, then you have to know your parents will probably find out. And just because people seem very accepting of it right now, doesn't mean that that's necessarily gonna be the case in 15 years when you're thinking about moving on to something else. Mm. It does really seem like, I mean, especially because of COVID, that it's really kind of transformed the industry and that so many people are turning to it instead of, you know, going to a studio, rubbing up against other people, which obviously at these kind of times is especially difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let you put some clothes on. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so yes. much. <laughs> I, rubber looks so good. It looks so good and it feels so uncomfortable. Yeah. Stoya is in her element talking topics that most people find uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm roughly the same age as you, and I get scared about aging all the time, but my job doesn't depend on my body, really. <laughs> I'd like to think I can do this job without my body. How do you process that, and how much do you worry about that? I worried 
a lot in my mid twenties. It was like, oh right, aging is like a thing. And like, what am I gonna do when that happens? I'm probably down to make porn when I'm 60, but it won't be nearly as athletic or vigorous as the porn I made in my twenties. Yeah, you tend to mostly see older men rather than older women in yeah. porn. We have, we have Nina Hartley and then like all the MILFs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some MILFs have very long careers, but a MILF, even if they come in as a MILF, can MILF for quite some time. I mean, we all have insecurities, right? And, you know, we work in a visual medium and you guys even more so because you're so exposed. Do you think that those kind of bubbling insecurities exist? Oh, for sure. There have been people who get labiaplasty. Which is when you fix your, or you... Change. Change. <laughs> yes. Change the, word. <laughs> the appearance of your lower labia and the extremely large amount of breast implants. Did you get much pressure to get boob jobs? Boob I jobs? Do you have boob job? I ended up sat next to this plastic surgeon at an award show who kept pointing out like everyone who he'd worked on that got on stage was like, I did those. I did those. I did that and finally I was like, I'm not interested. But from the um, industry the, itself, there wasn't much pressure? No, but there's also like my entry into that world, I was in control of so much of it. Mm. I came up with the outfits. They asked me what I wanted. Which um, sounds quite rare for getting into the industry, right? Super rare, super rare. Um, so it also felt like really wonderful to be like, I have so much autonomy and independence. That really does sound like the opposite to kind of the entrance of like a seedy world of pornography that you would imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. And I guess that rubs against the stereotype of young women getting into the porn industry who are like, you know, pressured or felt like there wasn't any other options or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. what was what was like the majority of women's experiences in, in getting into the industry? It varies so wildly. I got to make a choice, but there are a lot of people in different kinds of sex work, especially like working on the street, working off of Craigslist, doing direct providing instead of the like glossy entertainment end of it. Um, and there are a lot of trans women of color who've had to do sex work for survival. There are people who don't want to be here, who shouldn't have to be here. And there are people who really want to be here and shouldn't have to put up with like, true story, a producer saying, the guy you were supposed to work with canceled, so you're shooting with some random person that you've already told us you find distasteful. And of course, I just said no 30 times with increasing volume and firmness until they gave up and gave me a different performer. But um, these industries aren't built around catering to what the performer model actor needs unless they're a huge star. Once you're a huge star, you get to say, I need this, I need that. There are so many young women in the industry who get into it very young. How much kind of int intimidation or pressure is there on those women to partake in certain acts? There's a lot of pressure given the shortness of most female performers' careers and the longevity of the directors and production companies. I think there's a conflict of interest there. Have you witnessed that or experienced that yourself? I've seen women who don't do anal talked into using a butt plug. You know, it's, it's not getting railed in the ass, but it's something in the ass. But that's not a porn specific problem. It's an entertainment problem. And when we're talking about sex, it just feels so much bigger and more immediate and like the stakes are higher. There are still these cultural barriers when it comes to how we view and see sex and sex workers. I mean, you've written before, to parts of the world, I and all sex workers will always be reduced to inhuman vectors of disease and societal ill. I'm wondering if you, if you still feel like that and, and how far or not far you think society has come when it comes to viewing sex workers. There's still, you know, the MAGA people, they're real. 
they exist. They're very hateful and dismissive. There are people on like both sides of the political aisle who would rather demonize sex workers than deal with the complexity. But like all of these aspects of entertainment that I've worked in, you really have to fight for yourself. You have to advocate for yourself or you're gonna get steamrolled. I only want the toughest in porn right now, um, cause otherwise I worry.